Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests are from the current Riverside Theater production of Niceties. Uh, welcome, Jody Hovland, who's been with us many times. Jody, nice to see you. Good morning. Great to see you. And Crystal Marie Stewart, who is uh, the other person in this uh, production. Crystal, welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Before we get going on niceties crystal since you've never been on the show before tell me a little bit about your background where are you from uh when did you decide that theater was the thing you had to do oh goodness my poor parents um <laughs> I, um i originally am from south carolina um, i was raised in columbia south carolina i lived there for 13 years then i got my undergraduate degree from anderson south carolina which is in the upstate and i worked at the Warehouse Theater, mostly in Greenville, South Carolina, and in the or surrounding. So I did some work in North Carolina and in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to go to graduate school. So I auditioned at IRDA and I got my MFA at the University of Iowa. And the day I announced that I was going to Iowa, um, Adam Knight announced that he was going to become the artistic director at Riverside Theater. Now, Adam, was a journeyman at the warehouse theater where I also did a lot of work and kind of I the journeyman program it was done by then but I was basically an apprentice there that was where I did my first professional theater gig and did all my first internships so we have a lot of mutual friends so we both made our announcement posts about Iowa City the same day and all of our mutual friends were tagging us in the comments of each other's posts saying you guys should become friends so we were like we're gonna get a drink when we move so we went we're from the same place but we didn't meet until we both moved to Iowa City <laughs> so um so yeah, so that's how I ended up in Iowa City. And what's so funny is like, I never would have thought that I like would go to Iowa City. Not that Iowa City is bad, but like, I just didn't have an, the, the only time I had heard of Iowa was um, when I watched the Music Man <laughs> with my mom as a child. Um, but it's yeah, just like I, that I, everywhere. Yes, totally. One of my classmates um, loves the Music Man. <laughs> and so he loved that show. But yeah, and so I ended up at Iowa and I loved, um, I loved the U. I had a great experience. Um, and then I, um, Adam and I tried to find ways to work together. And so now I am the National New Play Network producer in residence at Iowa, uh, at Riverside. And I'm also the artistic associate, but I'm in this show. So I'm having a great time. That's me. Well, a little... well, first off, before we totally get away from the music band, I just have to say you're also talking to a former Harold Hill. Amazing. So music, music man roots run deep, apparently, in this conversation. So I'm like shocked uh, Chris... that more Iowa theater. I feel like more people should do that. It's such an Iowa show. And and with Hugh Jackman doing the revival the Broadway. on Broadway right now yes it's uh, it's really top of mind for a lot of folks but but mm -hmm. not our topic here today okay uh, the our nice topic thing. our topic is niceties and you know crystal i'm going to kind of stay with you because yeah. since you are coordinating with the uh you know with the the national play network you know and are involved in you know i'm you know in in i'm sure bringing scripts and things like that to the uh uh, to Riverside as a part of your role there uh, would did you have a part in uh, in bringing this show to anybody's attention or at what point did you become involved well I had read this script and I told Adam I was like this is something you should look at I think that Iowa City would like this script I had not initially thought that I would be in it <laughs> I was just like you should you should look at it <laughs> um because I think the thing that I find really interesting about this script is that it's set at a college, at a university. Um, because I think, while yeah, a lot of the topics within it are really topical and current, um, the fact that it is set at a university and that it delves so specifically into research and how to research and like power dynamics between students and professors, I think would be so interesting in this town specifically. Um, so, and I hadn't seen it done in that way before. And so I was like, Adam, I think you should read this. Um, so I'm really excited to be in it, but that was not initially what I was thinking about <laughs> when I brought this to his attention. I was just like, oh, Riverside should definitely look at this play because I think Iowa City audiences would really find it interesting because it's such a college town and so I think 
when I think of Riverside scripts and things that I want to show Adam, even before I worked here, there would be plays that I would read and I'd be like, oh, Riverside should do this. Because when I think of Riverside audiences, there are certain topics that I think of that ping for me. And one is anything to do with like universities and literature and history and anything that delves into that kind of stuff. Because this town very specifically gets those kinds of subjects in ways that other places don't. Um, so before that, I hadn't even thought, my actor brain was like shut off. I was like, oh yeah, Riverside should do this. And then Adam was like, what if <laughs> you were maybe in the play? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that could happen. So yeah, I'm just really excited because um, I think this town is particularly positioned to get things out of the script that I think other places might not. In addition to the academic setting being particularly suited for Iowa City, the subject matter that forms the conflict of the play is also to say that it is the perfect time and place to be having that discussion, I think is, is just the smallest way to, uh, to talk about that. So Jody, uh, why don't oh, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do that reveal of uh, why the, uh, why this is a particular moment in time when this is an important play to see. Well, this is, this is a conversation that we are all having and all, not just an academic uh, environment, but it's uh, it, it is so present in our, in our uh, in, in our in our communities right now, um, you know. In a nutshell, you have a, a history professor that I play, Janine Bosco, uh, for whom American democracy is like the wonder of the world. She is a champion of of um, the American Revolution, and she meets with a student over a paper, and this student is an activist who looks at America in a very different way and who sees in that history all of the Black lives that didn't seem to matter to the people who authored the history books. And so you have a built in uh, what begins as a fairly polite conversation about their different points of view and quickly becomes a very urgent, very heated debate about the role of race as we talk about history. It, it, it's a reckoning for all of us. You know, how, how, do we, how do we navigate that? How do we move forward? And um, that's really what this play is, is about. And it's exciting, exciting. In the forward to the play, the author says, you know, both of these women can be uh, rude and arrogant and stubborn. Both of them are right. Both of them can be wrong. Both are deeply human. And uh, out of that formula, I think, comes a really exciting moment-to-moment -moment theatrical event. And again, one that is, is playing out in classrooms across you know, our state and across the entire nation, even as and, we speak. And in legislatures, you know. And when um, we chose it, it wasn't that as topical. That's what I find so fascinating is like, when you pick a play and then it gets more and more relevant the closer you get to opening, I think that's when you know it's really juicy. You know what I mean? Cause mm -hmm. like, even when we chose it and then when we announced it and then when we got closer, like the, the stuff that was happening in the news got more and more topical for this play. So I, I think the conversations that are had in this play are really on an interpersonal level helpful for putting into context some of the the systemic things that are currently playing out mm -hmm. um because both janine and zoe the two characters are humans who are having conversations that i think people in real life are because of the niceties not comfortable having with each other um so we're gonna have it for you so we're gonna have them for you <laughs> um so I kind of like that too. I suspect that when, you know, you know, going into this and Crystal, you talked specifically about, you know, the academic setting being appropriate for Iowa City, uh, being you know, excellent for Iowa City. So setting aside the fact that the 
the political nature of the subject matter, which is in the headlines every day right now, I suspect that at some level, a lot of it is uh, a meditation on the difference in the power structure between the, yeah. you know, the faculty member and the student. So Jody, yeah. talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I'm very familiar with the setting because I taught as an artist in residence at Cornell College for many years. Um, I'm not familiar with the particular circumstance of this conversation, but the setting is very familiar to me. And it is so clearly about power, um, recognizing it, wanting it, uh, being threatened by it, hanging on to it, refusing to share it, not acknowledging that somebody else has it. Um, I mean, this has certainly made me take a look at my own privilege, <laughs> just as a white person, as someone who has been a a professor who has sat across that desk from many, many students talking about papers. And, you know, it's made me look at, gee, when did I use that power in a way that was inappropriate? You know, when did I not listen to a student's contradictory point of view? Um, so it's been a it's been a soul searching play for me as well. I think that any of us who are in kind of a leadership or managerial role and have been in that situation where, you know, a younger colleague staff member comes with an idea that we just don't get for right. whatever right. reason. There's that too. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and trying to look at that through the lanes, okay, you know, am I right? Is this not the right approach or, or am I is, you know, is my position of privilege preventing me from, from seeing that crystal, right. have you experienced that in your life and career? I'm guessing the answer is yes. Yeah, well, and it's also kind of hard because in a lot of the spheres that I operate in, whether it's academia or art, um, there's this emphasis on everyone behaving as if we're all friends, right? But there are power dynamics at play, and they often don't actually get enacted until there are disagreements, right? And so there's been this like, yeah, we're all friends here, we're all friends here, we're all friends here. And then someone's like, well, I have an issue. And then suddenly it's like, and then it's like, but I have power over you, you know? And so it's always odd when it's like, we try to behave as if there are not power dynamics mm. until yeah. we need someone to fall in line. And I think that sometimes happens in academia too, where like in, in K-12, the teacher is the teacher and the students are the students. There are very clear boundaries. But I think sometimes college professors are encouraged to be more casual, to make the students feel more comfortable and also the students are adults. But that can sometimes, if you don't have your boundaries intact, lead to some like blurred lines that you don't realize are there until it's gotten out of hand. Um, I know when I was a TA, our supervisors were very clear with us about like making sure that you keep really strict boundaries in place about power dynamics. But if you're not aware of that kind of stuff, like we, some of my classmates were not that much older than their students, you know? And so I think that's really interesting too. Um, like the older, the younger person is that can get weird. And so I think that's really interesting about this too, is like, if you're a really good teacher, even, and you're trying to like, make sure your students know you care about them, that can sometimes get a little weird. <laughs> and so that's also been odd for me is I felt that shift come when I'm like, okay, but I, and then you can feel the person pull up <laughs> and get ready to bring down their power hammer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I get it. All right, here we go. Um, and I, I always find that really interesting. The play is The Niceties, running through March 27th at Riverside Theater. Uh, Jody, you've been around Riverside Theater a little bit over the years. <laughs> you know, for you know, just just to not be too vague about that, you know, you and Ron Clark formed this theater years and years ago. Uh, what is it like stepping into the new oh. theater? Oh, it is a dream come true. It's, um, it is a fabulous new space. It is bright and light and has a wonderful hip urban feel. It's, um, it's so inviting 
it's really an exciting space, the, the performance space, which is completely flexible. You'll see audiences set up differently from show to show. The seats are comfortable. They've retained the intimacy of the Gilbert Street stage. It's 150 seats, so just a few more than we had on Gilbert Street. Um, it is um, intimate and personal, and uh, it, 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 it's wonderful. You know, I always dreamed when I was the artistic director at Riverside and flying the desk in addition to other things, I dreamed about someday being just an artist at Riverside, where what was before me was just the artistic work and not all of the other things. And I'm here. It's wonderful. I just get to play, you know, just to be an actor. So um, I'm, I'm very moved by this juncture of the theater's growth and Adam Knight is absolutely the leader to be taking us into the future. Um, it's, it's really thrilling. So you get to play and Crystal is now the one who has to do all the hard work. <laughs> That's right. <No. laughs> well, the play sounds fascinating, uh, just important and uh, reaching out, you know, emotionally and intellectually on so many different levels. And uh, I know that you're in the middle of the run and there are still plenty of tickets available at riversidetheater.org. Again, running through March 27th. And I wish you both the best of luck with the uh, rest of the run. And uh, thanks for meeting with me today. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you so much. Again, riversidetheater.org if you'd like tickets or more information about niceties. You can hear The Culture Crawl many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast. Watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.